All right, guys. Let's quickly revise security valuation second part, beta. That is equity shares. In the same video, we are also going to revise business valuation, guys. Subsequently, uh, now again disclaimer, guys. As I informed in the previous session, also this is not a substitute as such, guys, for the entire chapter. This is only to quickly recollect the concepts that were covered as such, guys, in the chapter. So to start off with, beta valuation of equity shares. I told you guys to value any security. The basic technique that we use as such guys is to discount all the future cash flows. To discount all the future cash flows, beta, you will need a discounting rate in respect of equity shares. That discounting rate as such beta is computed using CAPM model, capital asset pricing model. Under capital asset pricing model, you will be needing your risk free return. You will be needing what is the market return that is generated normally, guys, and then. What is the risk of the security that is measured guys using beta factor beta measures the relative risk of a security that is risk of that in relation to the market. Once you know beta factor as such guys you will write the value of an equity share as such guys as RF plus beta multiplied by RM minus RF. RM minus RF is the risk premium that the market fetches. Beta times of RM minus RF will be the risk premium of your security. To that if I add risk free rate guys I will get overall return required rate of return are we clear guys <coughs> after we did the concept of required rate of return guys i said cash flows can either be real cash flows or they can be nominal cash flows real cash flows are without the impact of inflation nominal cash flows are with the impact of inflation so if at all you have real as well as nominal cash flows guys value of an equity share should always be based on nominal cash flow and nominal discounting rate we are not going to consider real cash flows and real discounting rate reason the profitability that we arrive at of an organization beta will automatically incorporate all the expected prices all the expected inflation that is why cash flows by default are all nominal cash flows we use only those nominal cash flows for the purpose of valuation of an equity share are we clear guys to value an equity share as such beta we have different valuation methods that are covered in this chapter guys. I've divided those valuation methods into three categories. The first category as such beta is dividend based models. After that as such beta we had earnings based model and the last one as such guys was all the students beta can refer to the concept notes so that it's easier to revise. Abhi nahi matlab, jabhi bhi tum log ye baad mein video sun rahe ho guys. So we divide our valuation models into three categories. There is dividend model, there is earning model guys and then there is asset based model, cash flow based model guys I'm sorry. Asset based is under business valuation. Under dividend model guys the value of an equity share is simply equal to the present value of all future dividends. There are three cases that can arise under this. Either the company pays a constant amount of dividend year after year. If the company pays a constant amount of dividend year after year, guys, the value of the equity share will be equal to the present value of constant perpetuity. That is cash flow divided by discounting rate. That is dividend divided by cost of equity. Let's not forget we came all the way till here to revise. The second case is Sadbita is where dividends keep increasing at a constant rate. If dividends are increasing at a constant rate guys, the value of an equity share will be equal to the present value of constant growth perpetuity. And that beta will be P0 is equal to D1 divided by KE minus G. It is very important to identify in questions of dividend discount model whether the dividend given as such guys is D0 or D1. If they mention that dividend is paid or dividend for the last year, it will always be D0. If they use the word dividend for the next year or expected dividend, then we'll consider that to be D1. Are we clear guys? The third case under dividend discount model beta was variable growth rate. You know, when you say variable growth rate as such guys, if the growth rate does not remain constant as such guys, then what you're supposed to do is discount dividends as such guys specific dividends separately and then also consider price of the equity share price of the equity share beta where the growth rate stabilizes say for example your growth rate beta is 20 percent for the first five years after five years growth rate stabilizes at 10 percent you will be able to use the formula of constant growth perpetuity only to compute p5 you will not be able to compute guys anything other than p5 so here because growth rate is stabilizing after five years to compute P0 I will write present value of D1, D2, D3, D4, D5 and P5. That is how you're going to arrive at value of an equity share as such guys if it is variable growth. 
most important point to be remembered is any of these valuation models as such guys will always give us valuation on an x dividend basis and not on a cum dividend basis matlab ye jo bhi p not compute kar rahe hai beta using either d by ke or using d1 by ke minus g or using d1 d2 d3 so on till pn all of that does not include d not in case they mention that the price of the equity share is cum dividend your job beta will be to remove the amount of d not first convert that into x dividend and then compute whatever is the missing figure usually when they give market price of the equity share they expect you to compute required rate of return so to compute ke your job will be to first convert that cum dividend price into x dividend price do not forget that are we clear guys if at all they ask us questions as to what will be the impact of a new project as such guys on the value of the equity share i told you that you will have to present cash flows with the new alternative without the new alternative compute price under both the cases as such guys you will automatically know what is the impact of the price alternatively to know impact i said you can also compute npv of the new investment whatever is the npv of the new investment itself will be the increase in the wealth of the shareholders that increase if you divide by number of equity shares you will get increase per value of share and that increase per value of share beta if you add it to the existing market price you will automatically end up getting the new market price though we do not have to present we cannot present npv wala calculation in the examination i said examination mein please show all the detailed cash flows and then arrive at value of the equity share are we clear guys moving on to the next concept beta there we had earnings growth model based on earnings model as such guys that is where equity share is valued on the basis of earnings of a company we have gordon's model we have walters model guys and then we have pe multiple three concepts were given here we have gordon's model and then beta there was ek second let me directly shift to that page guys if it all i have written उंट what is sustainable over a longer period beta is only growth on account of reinvestments all right that is why as such guys gordon's model only considers growth that is on account of reinvestments you write growth rate under gordon's model as b into r where b is retention ratio r is return on equity whatever amount that you are retaining on that you are additionally going to generate earnings from the next year that is why it is b into r the formula is exactly the same guys for gordon's model you will still write d1 divided by ke minus g just that in place of growth rate the formula is b into r walters model guys considers two components in arriving at the value of the equity share guys the first component beta is present value of constant dividends that the firm is going to pay year after year the second component as such guys is the present value of earnings that you are going to generate on your retained earnings this is where the formula beta is d by ke plus r by ke into e minus d whole divided by ke there is still a drawback guys in walters model and the drawback beta is that it doesn't consider the compounding impact of earnings on earnings on retained earnings you retain something in the first year you are going to generate money on that in the second year but on that money that you have generated in the second year beta you are going to generate even additional earnings in the third year that compounding impact is not considered under walters model Now both Gordon as well as Walter divide all the firms into three categories. There is growth firm, constant firm, and declining firm. A growth firm is one beta where your return that is being generated exceeds your cost of equity. A declining firm is one where R is less than KE. A constant firm is one where R is equal to KE. For a growth firm, because the firm is able to generate a higher return than the expectations of the shareholders. you should not be retaining any earnings sorry you should not be declaring any dividends guys you should retain as much as possible so that you can reinvest those retained earnings guys and create a higher wealth for the shareholders 
for a declining form it is the other way around because you are the company is not able to manage the funds properly guys it is better to give it away to your shareholders declare everything in the form of dividends a constant form because you are exactly generating the return that is being expected by the shareholders as such guys you will say that r is equal to ke because r is equal to ke as such guys you will be indifferent as far as your dividend payout ratio is concerned irrespective of the payout ratio guys it is not going to impact the wealth of the shareholders in case they talk about optimum payout ratio this is what you will have to write for a growth form optimum is 0% for a declining form optimum is 100% for a constant form guys any payout ratio will be optimum another important point that i ask you to remember for walters and gordons model beta is that if there is no reference made to dividend discount model and they give a question on walters model the earnings given in the question will directly be considered in the numerator without adjusting any growth rate the logic behind this beta is that walters model does not consider earnings and dividend to change year after year because under walters model dividend is constant we end up taking the same amount of dividend guys under gordons model also are we clear but if the question is making clear cut references guys then you will have to take growth rate isliye every question of dividend discount model beta we consider growth rate there was one question of gordons model in which he said your objective is to compute growth rate and they mentioned that it is earnings of the last year even there beta we had to consider it as d not only we adjusted it for growth rate and computed d1 stand alone questions on walters model and gordons model whatever dividends are given in the question that itself will be d1 you are not going to adjust them for growth rate so under earnings based model we covered two methods so far first one is gordons model the second one is walters model the third one beta is pe ratio pe ratio is considered as relative valuation now that we already did business valuation chapter beta relative valuation is valuation by comparison so pe ratio beta is wherein you multiply the earnings of the company with the pe multiple what is the price that people are willing to pay for every 1 rupee of earning becomes your pe multiple if my pe multiple is 30 times it means people are willing to pay 30 rupees 30 times the amount of your earnings that is how you interpret pe multiple so based on pe multiple as such guys the market price of the share as such beta will be equal to market eps multiplied by pe ratio pe ratio in reality is dependent on two important factors what are those two important factors cost of equity as well as growth rate these are the two important factors as such guys that determine what should be the pe multiple of an organization higher the cost of equity lesser will be the price of a share lesser the price of a share lesser will be your pe multiple so cost of equity and pe multiple share an inverse relationship jitna zyada discounting rate hai higher the discounting factor lesser will be the price of the equity share that is why your pe multiple will be lower on the other side beta higher the growth potential of an organization higher will be the present value of discounted cash flows there was one question in which we saw beta that a growth rate increase of growth rate almost increase the price of the equity share four times instead of taking 16% we took growth rate as 18 19% and the price was almost four times higher than the, than the existing price so higher the growth higher will be the future cash flows higher the future cash flows higher will be the present value of that that is why a higher growth rate will result in a higher market price which in turn will result in a higher pe multiple if you recall beta we said that large cap companies cannot have a very high pe ratio their pe ratio would be around 25 27 30 times few large cap companies might have a pe ratio of 35 times also because as the organization grows as such beta the growth potential reduces small cap companies may have a pe ratio 50 60 times because the growth potential of small cap companies beta is usually very high higher the growth potential higher will be the pe multiple but i said in case cost of equity is not given and you are supposed to arrive at the value of an equity share using walters model then we may have to write cost of equity is equal to 1 divided by pe ratio this relation does not apply as such beta in reality this relation applies in a hypothetical situation and what is that hypothetical situation growth rate is zero and 100% of the earnings are being distributed as dividends only then as such beta you will see that cost of equity is equal to 1 divided by pe ratio iska derivation bhi class mein kiye beta we have derived how cost of equity is equal to 1 divided by pe ratio so these are your three earnings based valuation method 
just a recap first one was dividend based methods dividend based means there's only one method that is present value of future dividends but under that three cases either constant dividend or constant growth dividend or variable growth dividend not to forget that all of these valuation models will give us price of the equity share on an x dividend basis and not on a cum dividend basis under earnings based model beta we did three methods again there was gordon's model there is walter's model and then beta there is valuation on the basis of pe multiple moving on to the third one guys that is free cash flows available to the firm and free cash flows available to equity shareholders now the whole concept of fcff beta we did in valuation of equity shares only we are going to use the same concept in business valuation as well free cash flow model is considered to be superior to dividend discount model because of a primary reason instead of considering only the amount of cash flow that is being distributed to investors in the form of dividend we are taking the entire amount of cash flow that is available for distribution to the providers of capital not necessary that the amount of cash flow that is being distributed should be equal to the amount of cash flow that is available for distribution so under free cash free cash flow matlab the amount of cash flow that is available freely for distribution again under this there are two concepts one is from the viewpoint of the entire firm one is from the viewpoint of equity shareholders if you are computing it from the viewpoint of the entire firm we are talking about cash flow that is available for distribution to all the providers of capital that includes your debt that includes your preference that includes your equity that is why while you are computing free cash flows available to the entire firm guys you will not consider your capital structure dhruv you will not consider any amount of debt repayment you will not consider any amount of preference dividend payment preference share capital repayment equity any form of distribution to any provider of capital cannot be considered under free cash flow available to the entire firm that is why guys while you computing free cash flow available to the entire firm you write no pat which is ebit into 1 minus tax rate we are not even considering tax savings on interest we are directly computing tax on the amount of ebit to this you are going to add back depreciation you are going to deduct the amount of capital expenditure you are going to adjust working capital changes usually working capital will increase year after year that is why we write minus increase in working capital so once you get this free cash flows available to the firm as such beta you are supposed to discount them just like dividend discount model if the cash flows are growing at a constant rate right from year 1 you will directly write v not beta is equal to fcff for year 1 divided by ko minus g if the cash flows are increasing right from year 1 if the cash flows will increase say after 4 years you will have to discount the first 4 years cash flows separately and then arrive at terminal value at the end of fourth year using that constant growth formula are we clear guys the other concept under free cash flows is free cash flows available for distribution only to equity shareholders what is covered in this chapter beta security valuation equity is only fcfe free cash flows available for distribution to equity shareholders because you are computing free cash flows available for distribution to equity shareholders you should consider all payments except distribution to equity shareholders i cannot consider equity dividends i cannot consider equity buyback or raising money by way of e issue of equity shares i should consider payment of interest i should consider additional borrowings or repayment of borrowings i should consider preference dividend payment or repaying your preference share capital so how will you compute fcfe guys you start with profit after tax why are we starting with profit after tax and not with no pat you should consider interest payment also in computation of fcfe so that is why you start with profit after tax you still add back depreciation you deduct capital expenditure you deduct increase in working capital one additional thing that is to be adjusted here beta is the amount of additional borrowings or repayment of borrowings this additional borrowings how will you compute depending on debt equity ratio if the question says beta that your debt ratio is 25% then whatever is the net investment say my depreciation is 100 crore rupees my capital expenditure is 1000 crore rupees my increase in working capital is 200 crores my net investment will become 1100 crores ye 1100 crores ka 25% will become my additional borrowings we are not raising money to distribute that to equity shareholders when i add back additional borrowings the net intent is what to consider only investment that is being made out of equity shareholders pocket 
instead of deducting only the amount of investment that is being made out of equity shareholders pocket we are taking total investment and then we are adding back the investment that we are making by way of debt in short that will give us what investment that is being made out of equity shareholders are we clear guys that is why better to compute fcfe you are going to write pat add back depreciation minus capital expenditure minus increase in working capital and then better add back additional borrowings two questions they gave us debt ratio one question they directly gave us the amount of additional borrowings you should know how to do this fcff will be discounted at overall cost of capital fcfe will be discounted at cost of equity the valuation methodology is exactly the same matter there is no difference after that whether it is free cash flow or whether it is free cash flows available to equity shareholders are we clear about this guys iske alawa beta we did small other concepts guys like coverage ratio in this chapter but coverage ratio per se is not covered in this beta it is only because there were references made to coverage ratio coverage ratio kaise karoge beta if it is for revenue expenditure you will write profit available for that expenditure divided by that expenditure if it is for capital repayment cash flow available divided by capital repayment the only coverage ratio that we are going to use beta is interest coverage ratio and preference dividend coverage ratio interest coverage ratio beta will be ebit divided by the amount of interest preference dividend coverage ratio will be profit after tax divided by preference dividend if they ask us to combine interest and preference dividend coverage ratio then pat add back interest divided by preference dividend plus interest jo question kiye the class mein beta it was both interest and dividend coverage ratio that is why we had to write pat add back interest divided by preference dividend plus interest are we clear about this after this beta we moved to the concept of buyback of equity shares I said, if a firm is generating, yes, sub ratios carvaya tha, beta. What is capital gearing ratio? What is debt service coverage ratio? All of these are your CA inter concepts. But because there were references being made, we still have to arrive at this. Now, coming to the next concept, beta, under valuation of equity shares, we did buyback of equity shares. I said, buyback of equity shares is generally undertaken as such, guys, when a firm has surplus cash available, and that surplus cash is not required for the purpose of reinvestment. you can either declare a higher amount of dividend or distribute money to your shareholders by way of buyback of equity shares if you are declaring a higher amount of dividend the drawback with that is the expectations of your shareholders will increase because the expectation increases the firm might have to maintain that higher dividend as such guys if it is not possible to do that the other alternative of distributing cash as such beta is to buyback equity shares advantage of buyback beta is that because you are reducing the share base of the company your eps will increase as the eps increases guys market price per share also will increase so very matured companies as such guys in order to create wealth for the shareholders they undertake buyback of equity shares by doing that as such better they are automatically increasing the eps that in turn will keep increasing their market price of the share sometimes guys if the promoters see that there is a huge growth potential as such better in the company and they themselves have surplus funds available they will undertake buyback as such better so that they reduce public share holding and promoters share holding increases if promoters share holding increases as such guys automatically what will happen the value of those promoters as such better will increase sugar companies did that 2 3 years pehle they undertook buyback they reduce public holding better so that the value of the promoters in turn increases now what we learned under buyback as such guys is the impact of buyback on the wealth usually buyback is undertaken at a discount to your market price sorry buyback is undertaken at a premium to your market price my rights issue combine kar raha hu rights are issued at a lower price buyback will be undertaken at a premium why should buyback be undertaken at a premium shareholders will not offer their shares beta if you are not giving them a premium over the market price If the prevailing market price is three thousand rupees, and you go and tell them we will buy back at two thousand nine hundred, वो थोड़ी बेकुफ है बेटा to give it at two thousand nine hundred. Don't you think, sir, बेटा, you can sell the shares in the market directly at three thousand rupees. The question that we had, बेटा, was computing what impact of buyback on your total market price. We took, if you remember, buyback price as x, then we got post buyback market price. We multiplied it by the number of shares outstanding after buybacks to arrive at the buyback price, and they arrive at the number of shares that are outstanding after buyback. 
Is that clear, guys? After this, beta, we did the concept of right shares. Right shares, beta, is basically shares that are offered to the existing shareholders. Whenever a company has to raise money, guys, by way of issue of equity shares, it is mandatory as per Companies Act, such beta, to ensure that those shares are offered to your existing shareholders. There are four exceptions to this under Section 62 of Companies Act. Forget those exceptions. So whenever a company is raising money as such, beta, those shares will be offered to your existing shareholders and that too, beta, those shares are generally offered at a discount to the prevailing market price. Any transaction with your shareholder will not result in an expenditure. So it is absolutely fine as such, beta, for you to issue shares at a discount to your shareholders. They are our shareholders only. You can give them shares free of cost also. That is bonus shares. If you are giving shares at a lesser price to outsiders, beta, then it will impact the shareholders wealth but if you are giving shares as such guys to your own shareholders at a lesser price then it will have no impact so to arrive at the impact of rights issue the first thing that we do beta is compute theoretical x right price so what the beta straight up we will compute theoretical x right price theoretical x right price beta is computed say if you have a share whose current market price is 1000 rupees till the record date this 1000 rupees will be referred to as come right price once the record date comes as such, beta, we already know who's entitled to rights. Uske baad mein aata hai x right price. Let us say that the rights issue ratio is 1 is to 2. That means for every 2 shares held, you will be given 1 right share. And that right share as such, beta, is being issued at a price of say 400 rupees. So we are combining 2 shares of 1000 rupees with 1 share of 400 rupees, which should become the market price of three shares so 2400 divided by three beta 800 rupees will become your x right price come right price it was 1000 rupees x right price it is 800 whoever has the right they can purchase the shares from the company at a price of only 400 rupees but you know that this share is trading in the market at a price of 800 rupees so what is the gain better to them 400 so you can sell the right in the market at a price of 400 Whoever is getting the right can either subscribe to the right shares or they can sell right entitlements. In the given case, beta, you will be able to sell the right for a price of 400 rupees without smiling, of course, guys. Are we clear, guys? What is the value of right included in each share? For that, you will compare come right price with X right price. My come right price is 1000 rupees. X right price is 800. So the value of right included in each share is 200. You make reference to this till the record date. After record date, you will talk about value of one full right. Value of one full right is how much? In our example, 400. Because you will need two shares to get one right. In each share, the value included is 200 rupees. Two times of 200 will become the value of one full right. Rights issue will not impact the wealth of the shareholders in any manner. Provided you either subscribe to the right shares or you sell the right entitlements. If you are subscribing to the right shares as such, guys, then you are paying consideration to the company as such better. If you are selling the rights, you receive consideration. If you do not take any action, your wealth will reduce exactly to the extent of value of right. Is that clear, guys? After this better, we also spoke about the concept of short position and long position only because there was one question on stock lending scheme. Do you remember that stock lending scheme? I said long position as such, guys, is where you are buying the equity share first and then you sell it on a later date. Short position beta is one wherein you sell first and buy it on a later date. I said beta your cash market transactions are segregated into two categories beta. One is delivery transaction. The other one is intraday transaction. Delivery transaction mein beta you will be able to sell only if you own it. So that is why in a delivery segment as such beta you will not be able to undertake short positions. You cannot sell first without owning it. Intraday market mein delivery is not required. Because delivery is not required as such better, you will be able to create a short position. Meaning I can sell in the morning and buy back till the evening before the market closes. That is where better delivery is not required. Sound mein hai. That is what short position. In delivery segment also short position can be created through a scheme called as stock lending and borrowing scheme. Under a stock lending and borrowing scheme, guys, I am selling shares, but by borrowing them from another person first. If Khushbu has 1000 shares of Reliance, I'm asking her to give those 1000 shares to me. I will sell them in the market, realize money, 
and if the price is reducing as such guys i will buy back the shares at a lesser price and give it back to her khushboo is not losing in any manner because she intended anyways to hold the shares for a longer period so she is not worried about price fluctuations but i am who's creating short position is of the opinion that the stock price will reduce because i'm assuming that the stock price will reduce as such guys i want to create a short position wherein i will be able to sell at a higher price and buy back at a lower price what will be the impact of dividend on short position i borrowed securities from khushbu and i sold them in the market meanwhile if the company is declaring dividend as such guys won't khushbu be expecting that dividend so who will have to pay that dividend i will have to pay ha huh? you ha huh? i will have to pay that dividend to khushbu guys so for the short position creator dividend is an expenditure is that clear this is what beta we have covered in this chapter any doubt in this security valuation equity shares all the small small concepts that they have covered here done of course there was one more thing beta capitalization method capitalization method pe there was a question wherein the value of an equity share beta will be profits divided by your normal rate of return theek hai but wahan pe what is profit was already defined in the question 50% of distributed profits 5% of undistributed profits that was already defined if that was not given you would have directly taken profits divided by normal rate of return is that clear guys all right beta let's now revise the next chapter guys that's business valuation